not long ago, setting up a data warehouse meant purchasing an expensive as well as specially designed hardware appliance and running it on a data center. With data's consistent rise in volume and velocity, organizations seek solutions to process big data and any related challenges. One of the first decisions that organizations take is adopting a cloud-based model that offers flexibility, scalability, and high performance. The Snowflake is one cloud-based data warehouse platform provided as software as a service. Hello everyone, this is Dhruv from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session where I will be talking about what is Snowflake. So without any further ado, let's take a look at today's agenda. So we will start this session by first understanding what is a data warehouse and why one should choose Snowflake data warehouse tool and what actually it is. Moving ahead, we will understand the key features of Snowflake, its working architecture, and we will also have a walkthrough through Snowflake tool. And finally, we will do the data visualization using Snowflake and understand its pricing options as well. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on trending technologies. So let's start with understanding what is data warehouse. So if you see in computing, a data warehouse, also known as enterprise data warehouse, is a system used for reporting and data analysis and is considered a core component of business intelligence. Data warehouses are central repositories of integrated data from one or more disparate sources. They store current and historical data in one single place that are used for creating analytical reports for workers throughout the enterprise. The data stored in the warehouse is uploaded from the operational systems such as marketing or sales, the data may pass through an operational data store and may require data cleansing for additional operations to ensure data quality before it is used in the data warehouse for reporting. If you've listened about the process of extract transform load, means the ETL or extract load transform means ELT, these are the two main approaches used to build a data warehouse system. So now let's look at the different data warehousing tools available in the market. Now the thing is, why one should go for a Snowflake data warehousing? So for that, we need to understand the uniqueness of Snowflake. So now let's understand what makes Snowflake a real deal and why should one consider Snowflake as a solution. First thing is its performance and speed. So from multiple virtual warehouses, automatic query optimization, cluster tuning, micro partitions, the whole Snowflake architecture is built to allow faster query processing. Second thing is its user-friendly UI. So the Snowflake interface is user-friendly for both users with and without coding experience. Ensi SQL language is used to support general users. Third is its on-demand pricing. So Snowflake offers on-demand pricing, meaning that you will only pay based on the amount of data you store and the compute hours per minute you use. Unlike a traditional data warehouse, Snowflake also gives you the flexibility to easily set up the ideal time so you don't need to pay if the warehouse is inactive. Now coming to the fourth point, which is Snowflake is highly compatible. So you can query large data sets from various BI tools, means business intelligence tools like Tableau or Einstein Analytics or Tableau CRM. It also provides support for many programming languages such as Python, R, Java, .NET, Go, C, Node.js, etc. Coming to the fifth point, which makes it unique, is zero administration cost. So with features like auto scaling warehouse size, auto suspend and data sharing, you don't need to worry about the administrative cost that normally comes with other solutions. In comparison to a traditional data warehouse, Snowflake as a software as a service requires no hardware, virtual or even physical, and no software installed. So all of the ongoing maintenance, management and tuning is handled directly by Snowflake. Last point that makes it the Snowflake unique is it's easy data sharing. So the architecture allows seamless data sharing between consumers and providers. This isn't limited to Snowflake users. You can share your data with any recipients, even if they are not Snowflake clients. Now that we have understood why one should go for Snowflake as a solution, let's understand what actually it is. So Snowflake is a cloud data platform. In fact, it is the only data platform built in and for the cloud. Snowflake is also only cloud data platform that can be used as a data warehouse and a data lake. This allows both functionalities, which means that you no longer need to have a separate data lake and data warehouse or data marts. With Snowflake, you can build your data architecture within a single platform. So as we have understood, Snowflake is a data platform as a cloud service, which means Snowflake is a true software as a service offering. 
More specifically, there is no hardware to select, install, configure, or manage. There is virtually no software to install, configure, or manage. Also, ongoing maintenance and uh, management upgrades and tuning are handled by Snowflake. Snowflake runs completely on cloud infrastructure. All components of Snowflake's service, other than optional command line clients, drivers, and connectors, run in public cloud infrastructures. Snowflake uses virtual compute instances for its compute needs and a storage service for persistent storage of data. Snowflake cannot be run on private cloud infrastructure, means on-premises or hosted. Lastly, Snowflake is not a package software offering that can be installed by a user. Snowflake manages all aspects of software installation and updates. Now let's understand the key features of Snowflake. So when compared to legacy data warehouse technologies, Snowflake offers a number of features, including standard and extended SQL support. So as a SQL based data warehouse, it imposes the specified data defined language and data manipulation language commands used by SQL. It also provides advanced DML commands means data manipulation language commands for multi table operations such as insert, merge and multi merge. With Snowflake, users can set up temporary and transient tables for short term data and also users can use analytical and statistical aggregate functions and lateral views. Lastly, users can also create user-defined functions to extend functionality in both SQL and JavaScript. Second key feature is Snowflake provides a web interface for users to interact with the data cloud. With the web graphical user interface, users can manage their account and other general settings. Also, they can monitor resources and system usage, and also they can query data as well. Third key feature is command line interface. So Snowflake provides a Python based command line interface called SnowSQL for connecting to the data warehouse. It is a separate downloadable and installable terminal tool for executing all queries, including data definition and data manipulation queries for loading and unloading data. The fourth key feature is rich set of client connectors. So Snowflake provides a wide range of connectors and drivers that users can use to connect to their data cloud. Some of these client connectors include Python connector programming interface for writing Python apps that connect to Snowflake. Second is Node.js driver. Third is ODBC driver for C and C++ development. And fourth is JDBC driver for Java programming. Fifth feature is bulk loading and unloading data. Snowflake allows data loading in different formats and from various data sources. As long as the data uses a supported character encoding, users can load data from compressed files, AWS S3 data sources, local files, Flat data files like CSV and TSV, data files in Avro, JSON, ORC, PyQuit, and XML formats. Additionally, with Snowpipe, users can continuously load data in batches from within Snowflake stages as well as within AWS S3 or Azure Storage. So, now coming to the sixth and the last feature that is adequate data protection and security. So, with Snowflake, users can set regions for data storage to comply with regulatory guidelines. Also, they can adjust their security levels based on requirements. Snowflake also automatically encrypts data, object level access control, offer granular control on who can access what. Now, with understanding of why choosing Snowflake as a solution and what actually it is, as well as understanding its key features, let's move on to understand the working architecture of Snowflake. So, Snowflake's architecture is a hybrid of traditional shared disk and shared nothing database architecture. Before moving ahead, let's first understand what is shared disk and shared nothing database architectures. So a shared disk architecture as shown here is a distributed computing architecture in which the nodes share same disk devices but each node has its own private memory. The disks have active nodes which all share memory in case of any failures. In this architecture the disks are accessible from all the cluster nodes. This architecture has quick adaptability to the changing workloads. It uses robust optimization techniques. It contrasts with shared nothing architecture in which all nodes have sole access to distinct disks. So for that, let's understand what is shared nothing architecture. So as seen here, a shared nothing architecture is a distributed computing architecture in which each update request is satisfied by a single node. You can say that node to be a processor, memory or storage unit in a computer cluster. The intent is to eliminate contention among nodes. Nodes do not share the same memory or storage. One alternative architecture is shared everything in which requests are satisfied by arbitrary combinations of nodes. This may introduce contention as multiple nodes may seek to update the same data at the same time. Shared nothing architecture eliminates single points of failure allowing the overall system to continue operating despite failures in individual nodes and allowing individual nodes to upgrade without a system wide shutdown. 
So this was all about the shared disk architecture and shared nothing architecture. So similar to shared disk architectures, Snowflake uses a central data repository for persistent data that is accessible from all compute nodes in the platform. But similar to shared nothing architecture, Snowflake processes queries using MPP means massively parallel processing compute clusters where each node in the cluster stores a portion of the entire data set locally. This approach offers the data management simplicity of a shared disk architecture, but with the performance and scale out benefits of a shared nothing architecture. So Snowflake's unique architecture consists of three key layers in that the first layer is database storage. So when data is loaded into Snowflake, Snowflake reorganizes that data into its internal optimized compressed columnar format. Snowflake stores this optimized data in cloud storage. Snowflake manages all aspects of how the data is stored, the organization, file size, structure, compression, metadata, statistics, and other aspects of data storage are handled by Snowflake. The data objects stored by Snowflake are not directly visible nor accessible by customers. They are only accessible through SQL query operations run using Snowflake. Now the second layer is query processing. So query execution is performed in the processing layer. Snowflake processes queries using virtual warehouses. Each virtual warehouse is an MPP compute cluster composed of multiple compute nodes allocated by Snowflake from a cloud provider. Each virtual warehouse is an independent compute cluster that does not share compute resources with other virtual warehouses. As a result, each virtual warehouse has no impact on the performance of other virtual warehouses. So what are these virtual warehouses? So virtual warehouse often referred to simply as a warehouse is a cluster of compute resources in Snowflake. A warehouse provides the required resources such as CPU, memory and temporary storage to perform the following operations in a Snowflake session. So what are these following operations? These are like executing SQL select statements that require compute resources. Example, retrieving rows from tables and views. Second operation is performing DML operations such as updating rows in tables like delete, insert or update or also for loading data into tables like copy into table. Lastly, also for unloading data from tables like copy into location. To perform these operations, a warehouse must be running and in use for the session. While a warehouse is running, it consumes Snowflake credits. Remember that. So the third layer is cloud services. So the cloud services layer is a collection of services that coordinate activities across Snowflake. These services tie together all the data components of Snowflake in order to process user requests from login to query dispatch. The cloud services layer also runs on compute instances provisioned by Snowflake from the cloud provider. Services managed in the layer include authentication, infrastructure management, metadata management, query passing and optimization, as well as access control. So this is how the complete architecture of uh, Snowflake looks like. As I have explained you all the layers and they're working. I hope with this you understand the working architecture of Snowflake. So moving ahead, now we'll make you walk through the Snowflake uh, data warehousing tool. Let's go to Google, open your browser. So you can just uh, search for Snowflake and in this go here. And uh, here you can like clean your details. And then in the next page, you will be asked to choose a cloud provider as well on which you want to host. So suppose if you're hosting on AWS and Azure or GCP, there are three options only for that. Like host on any of them, your Snowflake service. And similarly, the charges will be charged on the basis of that. So here you have like three days free trial of Snowflake. So after your sign up process, you will receive a activation link on your mail. You can just go to your mail and uh, activate your account from there, create an email and password and uh, log into that user name and password. Like I already created, I completed the process. So I just log into my account. So here's my account. Remember that because it is hosted on a cloud uh, provider. So you, you can like see I have hosted it on AWS similarly. So it's not a tool. It's a website you will find here because it's hosted on cloud. So I have logged into my Snowflake account and here you can see I can like choose the account rights here. So it's like what role do I want to choose? So here I can see the default role is system admin. But I can choose the account admin as well. So I'm right now I'm choosing account admin. So this is like the main worksheet how it looks like of a SQL query. Okay, though it is like that, but it is uh, different from the SQL server or PostgreSQL and that kind of things. So here you can see uh, your database here. If you go into public, like you'll find schema, like in the table and views and everything are there. Here also sample data and everything, test DB, public, it's there or not, you can see. Okay, but you can add your uh, worksheet here. 
then you can come to system admin here here also you can choose the role it is just for the worksheet this worksheet whereas this is for the whole account uh, here the which role we have chosen this is for the whole account and here we can choose uh, for this uh, specific worksheet like you can see this worksheet is here you can create a new worksheet from here as well and you can name it so right now i'm just uh, closing these so here you can change the role suppose you can come here and change it to account admin similarly uh, things will change here as well and uh, then you can for compute purposes you can also change the role here like here it's account admin you can change the system admin as well but let it uh, remain account admin only then you can choose the schema and everything and select database uh, here also you can change the role and everything for that you can select the database as well here whichever you want to choose so here whatever you are going to query here you will get results here this is the window where we get the results you can see here row one it's showing for the result now here similarly you can come like you can see certain options here so you can come to databases here here you can see all the databases which are being created already you can create a new database from here like suppose if you want to create test uh, database you can give some comment and uh, you can create it you can see test database is being created and you can clone this as well so to get uh, it on a worksheet okay then we come to share so here you can see like secure share name all the things which have been shared in that manner also you can like create your shares and then there is a data marketplace like whatever people are creating data of they can share it uh, here in the data marketplace on the multiple data sets they are like uh, working on some data so they can upload the data here you can see a different kind of data sets are available here like we financial beat marketing or commerce now coming to warehouses so this is whatever warehouse you are going to create that will be available here with all its uh, features uh, showing here like its size clusters and when it is resumed and when it is stopped when it is created everything and who is the owner of it now similarly if you come to worksheet this worksheet is same that which we open which comes in front of the snowflake so the okay, next is history here uh, you can see whatever database are being created with the recession ids whatever the features are they will all be given here and when it is created when it is stopped and how much time long they are been running on okay similarly you can go for account from here this account option it's been uh, set for account admin so here you can see all the usage billing whatever has been there for a certain warehouse how much credits are used here how much billing has been done for them so users you can see different users like which one is enabled right now like my account is 2662 so that's the username of mine so that is being enabled here it's showing the roles policies sessions everything is there now you can come to partner connect as well suppose you want to use altr for that or data guys data world different features are available here to use like suppose uh, click is there and uh, informatica is there you can use any of them coming to the partner connect you can connect to your snowflake whatever you require then there is this help option if you require any kind of help you can like refer the documentation as if you have forgot some step or something how to do something on this data warehousing hosting so you can refer the documentation as well then you can come to notification whatever notification has been shown they are being shown here in the notification panel so this is a simple walkthrough like now there is a snow site as well that i will show you how it work so this is the walkthrough now let's understand how we can do data visualization using snowflake the data simple visualization we will do but uh, that's the cool thing about snowflake that you don't require any additional like a bi tool for that for data visualization so a lot of the visualization can be done internally within the snowflake so you can just go to snow site for that here you will see all the worksheet dashboards a different kind of window this is like a preview window these kind of details are there we are just going to create a dashboard for right now so you can see like i have created two dashboards already that have been shown here so i'm going to create a new one you can just go to dashboard give a name to it like suppose uh, i'm going to give sf demo and visualization we create a dashboard here now select the new tile here so here you see a window of uh, for querying a simple window for querying so what we can do here is we can select our data what we are going to select so we are going to select the snowflake sample data in that you can select tpch fsf001 in the sample data you can see there is a lot of information here like you can go to sf001 in that uh, you can pin you can go to tables first and then you can uh, pin the customers that will come here customers and then you can pin orders suppose it will come to a main window and then you can like also pin 
line item so all these are being pinned here that's yeah so here you can see whatever uh, details are there in customer all the customer names and addresses or like whatever the phone details account balance these kind of things are being presented here orders customer key order status order date order priority everything is given here regarding that then there's line item being given there so all the details are here and now we will start querying so i already have a query present with me already so i will just paste the query here and here what we are going to do is we are going to align the customers by order so what we are going to here is we are going to align orders by customers so we will just name it as uh, customer orders and uh, we can run the query here so you can see all the details of the customer and their order date total price everything has been provided here and here you can see different kind of visualizations for the different features are being shown here like for order date total price you can see it here and you can get out some meaningful insights from that a clear selection here so this is how it has been done now what you can do is suppose like you can see here there's a different date thing is there order date so we can filter out the dates as well like you can see there are very old dates are here i don't know for some reason there are very older dates here so so we are just going to filter that out i have a code already written for that as well so here i will just paste it so from where order date equals to give and then you can see as soon as you paste it here you get this filter here last day so here you can choose and suppose if you want to choose for some specific date so you can say it after uh, some you can say 1997 or 1988 you can give like uh, suppose i give for 1998 so i will just go it here and uh, choose uh, after july 30 1998 now i will run the query again right now it didn't came again um, the query again you will just run it again it will probably compile now properly so now you can see all the dates uh, here are after july 13 1998 time that's why all the order dates are after june 1988 so now you can come to the chart as well here here you can see line chart already been presented here because this automatically compiles like what kind of chart can give us the majority amount of insights so now what we can do is suppose if you want to give uh, the variables as well here like we can come down and label the x-axis which is order date and we can also label the y-axis as well which is total price and it will be shown here whatever you want to choose for the sum and like data x axis and y axis so that you can choose and here you can see the chart type like right now it's line chart we can go for bar as well it's been provided here scatter heat grid scorecard everything is presented so let's have a bar graph for it so there are like multiple insights you can see here for this filter now you can like return to sf demo that is a snowflake demo of course let me come back this chart i think i need to run again so pause bar graph so this is all we have here can just return to return to SF demo visualization so yeah you can see the bar graph here you can make out the insights whatever you need it here similarly you can get the customer orders and tables form also as well you can just drag it here so other than the graph you also have the whole table here now the next thing is to get the number of orders by customers so we just select the new tile here and I have already have a query for that so I will just select it and paste it here that's it so I will run this. So here you can see the total number of orders. There are 15,000. It is after uh, June 1998. All the orders. So 15,000 orders are already here. So you can just go to demo. Just a second. Let's come back to it. I have it here 15,000. So the orders we have got, we can just place it here. And we can place this one here. So the next thing is uh, we need to create a heat grid. So that can be created from here. You can just go to new tile from worksheet. So I already have a code for heat grid as well. So I will just copy the code and paste it here. And you can just run the query. You can see the order status here. So on the basis of customer name, we have to find the order status or the order for that particular customer. So we can come to chart here. Here you can see the line chart for it. So what you can do is, like suppose if we give the customer name here, let's order it by a customer name. Let's come to first heat grid, okay? Let's make a heat grid for it so you can see the heat grid here what you are able to see here is like uh, on the basis of uh, that customer what's the order status on the basis of that different rankings it's been placed here on the basis of rank so for heat grid we are going to customize the data in a different manner like for rows uh, i will give the customer name for columns i will give the order status so now you can see how it's been summed up for customer wise this is way better like what we have got before 
this is a proper segmentation not the perfect one but at least to some level so this is the heat grid here and now let's go back to the uh, sf demo visualization so we can place it here right so we have got the scorecard we have got the heat grid we have got the table and we have got the chart as well so the last step is you can share it as well with other people you can click on share here you can like give the name or use a name and you can add them so that they can check it and also you can give them the different rights like view run or view results or cannot view all the rights are there or you can just copy the link from here depending and on choose the right as well and then just send it to anyone and they can have the right to see your dashboard also if you give the right to view and run they can run as well or you can just view the result or you can also give like you can block them from seeing it so you can just give cannot view that's been done here so this is all about how visualization can be done in snowflake so this was all about the how data visualization can be done in uh, snowflake now let's understand the pricing options in snowflake in different pricing criteria in snowflakes in snowflake there are like four different ways like you can choose your plan in snowflake like there's a standard one here you can see all these options of complete sql data warehouse you will get and the premium support for 24 hours 365 days and one day of time travel and everything is there so enterprise if you see that is standard plus so over what all you will be getting on standard other than that you will get multi-cluster data warehouse and up to 90 days of time travel and then annual ranking of all encrypted data and dynamic data masking all these things so whatever you're getting in enterprise additional to that you will get a lot of service in business critical as well like hipa support pci compliance azure private link support and aws private link support all these things are there and similarly if you come to virtual private snowflake that is vps so in, in this whatever you were getting in business critical enterprise and standard so additional to that you will get other services as well like like customer dedicated metadata store let's explore more of uh, pricing criteria in uh, snowflake as you can see like there are three different ways of getting charged like storage for virtual data warehouses and for storage for virtual data warehouses and for cloud services somewhere this is of course what is a credit you can understand like because somewhere like uh, credits are going to be used for the consumption of resources on storage so there are certain units of measure and it is consumed only when a customer is using resources such as when a virtual warehouse is running or the cloud services layer is performing work or serverless features are used you can see the virtual warehouse size there are different sizes for that and on the basis of what size you are choosing the credits get consumed per hour so they have a certain price for that those credits all these i have already explained you like standard enterprise and business critical there is the virtual private snowflake here you need if you need on demand you have to select the region first the basis of that you will be charged like suppose i have the region aws mumbai so this kind of pricing i will be charged with so like if i am using the standard one i will be charged 2.2 dollar enterprise 3.3 dollar and uh, for business critical i will be charged 4.4 dollar means this is what is equivalent to the per credit so you can see the charges here like 46 dollar per terabyte per month for customers deployed in aws mumbai because of course my snowflake is hosted on aws that's why this is the price i will be charged with and if similarly if someone else is hosted on azure that will be a different price and similarly for gcp there will be a different price this was all about on demand if you want to make a property purchase capacity snowflake provides customers the option pre purchase capacity capacity purchase is a like specific dollar commitment to snowflake so this can be charged on a monthly basis you can select the region here as well mine is uh, aws mumbai so for this capacity storage you can see there are 25 dollar per terabyte per month of customer deployed in aws mumbai this is a pretty less compared to the on-demand one so let's see the data transfer prices for different regions if from where you are going to transfer and to what you are going to transfer so you can see the region for different region prices are here and if you are going to transfer to the same region then what are the prices we're in the same regions it won't cost anything then if you're going to transfer to different region but the same cloud so like suppose if i want to check for mumbai so i'll be charged 86 dollars and similarly if i've been uh, transferring different cloud remember this this is the unit is a uh, per terabyte so in mumbai i'll be charged 109 dollars for your data transfer to a different cloud and uh, this is the price for microsoft azure like similar in the similar manner to the same cloud provider or different cloud provider or for the same region or different region similarly the same criteria is for gcp as well here so this was all about the pricing so with this we come to the today's session of what is snowflake i hope you had a great time learning and understanding about it and if you have any queries please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below until next time thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries 
and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!